Let's explore the JSON step and how it works. First, let's look at how we collect data in JSON format. Let's say we have an object that contains data, like strings or links among many others, or even an array of links to two child objects. In this case, we have an author, Emmanuel Kant, with links to two child objects, which are books. Let's create a scenario, and this one will work with the author's data structure. Now we add a JSON step. The first task is to select the mode of operation. Here it's Compose JSON. You also need to specify the schema by which this JSON will be assembled. Notice that one of the fields is an array of objects, in this case, books. Now we go to the Compose JSON tab and choose a field where we will save our JSON. Then we configure the field mapping. For example, the author's name goes in the Name field and Country goes into the Country field. And if we choose Books, which is an array of links, then we see our list of objects or book titles as an option. We can then configure how the fields are mapped within it. Here we have all the information that's stored in the child objects, which will all be collected in one array of objects in JSON. If needed, you can now add anything that's missing from the schema. For example, here in the link field, you can add a link to buy the book. We can always leave the field empty in the schema, but you can still configure the mapping here. The link will be filled in the link field from the object in JSON. Now, let's run the object through our scenario in debug format. We open the structure, copy the object's ID, then paste the ID, and the object goes into the scenario. Let's see how we can pass JSON data into objects. Here's our object, an author. It's empty now except for one field with data in JSON format. There's also an array of objects in it, the books, from which we'll create new objects. We copy the JSON, add a JSON step to the scenario, select the Pass JSON mode, and save the schema. The data in the schema itself isn't important. It's the set of fields that matters. Next, in the Pass JSON tab, we select the field from which to take data and configure the mapping. Which object fields should be used to save data from JSON? In this example, names belong to the Name field, Countries to the Country field, and Photos to the Picture file field. Also, if we select an array of objects here, there will be two types of passing, either two objects or pick an object. That's zero, one, two, and so on. In this case, we want to create new objects from an array, so we choose the two objects passing type. We also configure the mapping for any newly created objects, but we need to select the array link field where these new objects will be saved. That means where the links to the newly created objects will be stored. Finish configuring the mapping of created fields. These are all text fields, but don't forget that you can use multi-level nesting. Check again with debug. Copy the object's ID. Throw it into the scenario and look at the object. Here it is. All the JSON data is saved, including two object links, books. Let's look at the structure of the book. We have two objects that we've just created from our JSON data.